Yeah. One more? One more. Okay. <laughs> We don't have to be all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait on them. I didn't know this is still in there. Thought I was running behind. Heading fun back there, wasn't you? Time flies, you having fun? Yeah. Yeah, good to see them millions coming out of the Sunday school room. So, uh, had any birthdays? Any birthdays this week? Yep. Got one coming. She didn't tell us Friday. Oh yeah. <laughs> All right. If we let everybody come to your feet, and we'll sing to Peggy. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, baby. On the announcements for... for this week, uh, I guess this afternoon we won't have any services for people who have family gatherings and stuff. Come, come back Thursday night. Be back in uh, Thursday night for Bible study. Or sometimes we sing in the choir some on Thursday night. So be, uh, try to come out for that, the 21st. Um, anyone else have anything on the announcements? It's no services tonight. We'll get back into services on Thursday night. Uh, this is the third Sunday, so we will have um, two offerings, the regular and the ARC. So if we can get forward to come up, we'll take up this offering. Yeah, the church has been working for some time now on a prayer garden outside the church here. If you, you need to go out the back to the door to the left to take you out there. You can go out that way or you can go around the driveway and come in. But it's, it's right beside the, where Johnny and Gaynell are sitting here at the church. You'll see it. We had the cross put up for a while now. Uh, they did get some flowers and a, a prayer bench and some mulch and some stuff out there. So the prayer garden's ready for... Anybody wants to go out there and take Sunday Easter pictures or, or pray or anything you want to do, do check it out because it, it's a beautiful thing. The church is done there. It looks really good for a prayer garden. So it's out here for anybody to use, as Johnny said earlier this morning. So please use it and enjoy it. Anybody else got anything? Not get forward to come up. We'll take up the offering. If you will come to your feet. And we'll pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you in prayer. Just uh, be with this church. Be with everyone's come out today to be part of it, Lord. We just ask you to bless. As you'd see the blessings to go to, Lord, I'll be with Gary. As he's not feeling well this morning. He'd go home early. Just be with him. Let him know we're thinking about him, praying for him. Lord, just thank you for this church. Thank you for the prayer garden that's out here that we can come and, and just a place to, to pray to you, Lord. And just thank you for Easter. Thank you for uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross for us, Lord. Just thank you for everyone that's come out today. Thank you for the sunshine. Be it the ones that's traveling. Uh, be it the family gatherings that's going on for Easter, celebrating Easter. And Lord, just thank you for Easter and just thank you for all that you do. Amen. Amen. the offering for the kids for the pennies. Anybody got to do that? Turn and shake hands.
choir. Nothing but the blood of 
Too late to pray. 
Good morning. Good to see each one of you in the house of the Lord this morning. <laughs> I told Kenneth, I wish he had not a, said what he did about changing the message. As soon as he said that, my message began to change. I had what I thought I wanted to share with you, and now it's totally gone. Share with you something different. I've not talked to you a lot about my trip to Israel. I've shared with you part of it. It was a beautiful experience. Down to, to the part that when we read about Friday, there was so many things I'd been missing down through the years. When you go to Jerusalem, it's quite different. Uh, the city of Jerusalem itself is uh, part of the inner circle inside of what the wall is, it's still there. It's commercialized as everything else is, but it's still there. And we went to the Garden of Gethsemane the day before we was going to leave. Our tour guide had special permission to take us the Garden of Gethsemane is quite large and as a whole, but the inner part of it, the inner circle and where they say the trees, the olive trees are still standing that was there when Christ was there praying in the garden. I enjoyed it because they took us inside the inner garden and then you go on over to the tomb. You the average person even in Jerusalem does not get to go in because it, it has to be a guided tour to go in. And they told us we was going in and our guide is a great Christian man. He had been here in the United States and I'd met him and was looking forward to spending some time with him. <laughs> I think I told you once that we, when we rode from Galilee to the Dead Sea, it's a three hour drive down the mountain. He spoke for three hours. He never had a note. He never had a thing. He just talked to us about the trip. So when we went in the garden, I was sort of expecting, I guess, uh, what I was going to see. He started talking. He was almost preaching to us. And I looked down and we see the picture and it's been visualized in my life, my mind most of my life. These, uh, we, we see Christ bowing at a rock and praying. It used to be a picture of my study, I don't know what's still there or not. Christ praying at a rock in the garden, it's supposed to be when he prayed the night before he was going to be crucified. While he was sharing with us, they have made walkways out of fine wash stone. In the midst of that wash stone is a rock a little bigger than this pulpit that you can see the top of. All I could think of, this could be where our Lord prayed. When we went through this, they gave us time before we went to the tomb just to steal away and pray anywhere. Said they was a, a group of uh, 27 of us together. Said just hunt your place, just spend your time in prayer. Found me a place over in the corner next to the wall and heaven came down. Praying where our Lord prayed. And the prayer he prayed I remember quite vividly praying, God help me to be willing to say not my will for time be done. Because that's what Christ prayed and he died and paid our sin debt the next day. I wanted to share with you and my thoughts were changing. I'm, I'm going to read you something I wrote down and if any of you follow us on Facebook, you, you, you probably saw me share it already. What Christ knew when he went to the garden, 
He knew they would never be a Easter Sunday morning without a Black Friday. And when I say Black Friday, I'm not talking about the sales for Christmas. I'm talking about a mockery of a trial that he went through. <laughs> and then the scourging, the scorning, all the things that he went through. And then walking out of Jerusalem. I still get excited when I think about it. There's a street that's known as De La Rosa. Christ walked out of the city of old Jerusalem, down De La Rosa, outside the wall, up a rock wall that goes up the side of the mountain to the top of the mountain where he was crucified. We were walking around and where we turned to go and we didn't go up on the mountain because we were going in a different direction for something else. Almost as I was walking, I could see stains in the rock and they say it's the same rock wall, De La Rosa is still the same it was in Christ's day. They've never changed it. It's still the wall that goes up. I saw stains and I thought, my, how that must have been stained with the precious blood of Christ. He was willing to be scourged, his body beaten, place a crown of thorn on him, and then ask him to carry his cross up that rough, rocky street. How much he loved us. But there was some things I wanted to share with you with this. He said he knew in order to have a Sunday, they had to be a Friday. They had to be a death. They had to be a burial. <laughs> Thank God for Sunday, the resurrection. He came forth. I read the story of the ladies that were going. Kenneth mentioned it in Sunday school. Thank you, Kenneth, for the Sunday school lesson. They were going to anoint the body. God had already took care of that. If you have your Bibles, turn in the 26th chapter of Matthew. I want to show you something. Let it stay with you. Sometimes Mary and Mary Magdalene, some of them were going to the tomb to anoint it. God takes care of stuff a lot of times before we get to it. And by the way, you can't do tomorrow what you should have done yesterday. I want you to keep that thought in your mind. Christ said in order for joy to come, he had to carry the cross. He carried the cross up Gilgotha's hill and thank God there was joy when he come forth victorious over death, hell, and the grave. In the 26th chapter of Matthew, the 10th verse, I want to show you something, let it stay with you. God takes care of things in his time and in his way. You and I, Sometimes try to get things in, in different order, and God has an order. He wants things done. He anointed the body before the death. <laughs> Honey, he knew Christ was going to be obedient. I hope you and I are obedient enough that God can depend on us, that we'll do it. But I want you to see his body being anointed long before his death. When Jesus, uh, oh, let me let me go back. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me read this to you uh, just a little bit back and go back further. But I'm going to read 10 and then I'll read on down. said, when Jesus understood it, he said unto them, let me, let me go back and read the whole thing so you'll get it. Now, when Jesus was in Bethany, now that's back outside Jerusalem in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of very precious ointment and poured it on his head and he sat, as he sat at me. When his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? Now, God don't waste things. There was a purpose. Christ was going to die on Friday. The Jewish... Law was, the Sabbath started on Friday afternoon at dark. When it was dark, too dark to work on Saturday, it was the dawning of the Sabbath day, 
and there could be no work, no nothing done according to the Mosaical law and under, under the Jewish provision, the Sabbath started then. They did not have time to go get spices, bring them back, anoint the body. Joseph Arnes was going to plead, beg for the body that they could bury it before the darkness came and would bring him down. Wasn't time for anointing. There was just time to get the body all the way. They had to come down off of Gilgotha. They had to go down by the street, Alabat, back down uh, De La Rosa, and then down into the garden. They went all the way down, take him down to the garden to buy. They had to hurry because darkness was coming. God knew this in advance. God knows what's going on. God knows what's happening in your life. He knows what's happening in mine. They brought Christ down. Joseph put him in his, his own tomb, did he that do? Or chiseled out of rock. <laughs> Kenneth, your dad's grave may have been rough, son, but this was rougher, his solid rock. They had a huge stone that was in a trough that rolled back and forth. He, they took him in. Now, that grave, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I want to explain this to you, that you'll see and to know what the purpose of everything working the way it did. God had a purpose. This lady comes in. By the way, it's Mary Magdalene. If you want to go run your reference to it, Mary Magdalene, that was a woman of Christian character. She brought the most precious thing she had to anoint the body of Christ. God knew that there wasn't going to be time afterwards, so he allowed her to anoint the body of Christ long before they buried it. Now, they, they put the ointments and the spices to keep the body from ever uh, smelling or doing anything. The, the, the uh, tomb is huge out. There's a walkway that you bend over. You walk into it. It, it, it's divided now. There's a fence across it. You can't go in where Christ's body was laid. You go in, you view it from the side. Where the people came to anoint the body and to preserve the body uh, for, uh, uh, for its burial and so forth. And when they got there, it was empty. Now, I promise you, I walked down the little white stone uh, uh, trail going to the grave. I wasn't going to be convinced the body wasn't there. I knew it wasn't there. Christ had lived my heart and life for a long time. I knew he lived, but I just wanted to go in. I wanted to have one time of prayer in it. Alan and myself went in together, and all we done was just bow our head and prayed and uh, thank God for the empty tomb. I'm glad it's empty. Christ got up and went home. His body had been anointed. They didn't have to worry about going. We don't have to worry about doing what God has already got together. It's already been done. And so uh, they were doing it. And he was anointed. And notice what Christ said about it. He said for uh, they were complaining because the money could have been used to be spent on the poor. He said the poor you have always with them. He said why are you troubled? You, uh, uh, why are you troubling you, the woman? Uh, for she hath uh, wrought a good work upon me. Christ approved of what she was doing, even though it was before his death. Normally it was to be done after, but because of time's sake, it wouldn't have to, it couldn't be. He allowed it to be done early. He said, for you have uh, the poor always with you, but me you have not always. Now, walking with him. He walks with us, not in physical means, but spiritually, he lives forevermore. I'm glad, praise God, he does. Now, when, when you go and you see the place and how the mockery and what Christ was put through, this was the, the blessing before the darkness set in. When you, if you ever permitted, or sometime I'm going to show you the pictures of some of the places and some of the things that are there, and some of the things that Christ suffered. If you get a chance, go. I don't, I don't care what he ministers, I don't care who you are. If you get a chance, go. 
there'll be things that'll happen while you're there that you won't be expecting. Some of my greatest blessings happened just out in the street where I wasn't expecting it. Or on the... <laughs> when I first got to uh, Jerusalem, we were staying in Galilee, on the Galilean Lake. They told us that they would take us on a, a tr very sea where Christ walked on the water. <laughs> the night we arrived, we, uh, we just got a room and got in and we were 50 feet of the Galilean Lake and all it is, it, it, it's a lake, it's not a sea. When you hear them talk about the sea, they call it the Sea of Galilee, but it's actually just a huge lake you can see across it. And we got there and here come a storm. Water was really uh, raging. I thought about the disciples when they were sailing across and Christ come walking to them. They said, we're going to take you out and let you see what it was like out on the sea. <laughs> Called the fishing boat and started out across. And it was, maybe I was excited already looking for things, but something happened that just thrilled my soul and that's why I say things happen that you're not planning on happening. I never thought about it ever before, but when we got on the, uh, the boat and started out across the sea, our captain was a Christian. He said, now, we love America. He said, we want you to know we do. And he said, because you're a mercantile, he said, we're going to fly the American flag with the Israeli flag. One of his crew members brought it out went over and run it up on a mast to go up beside the Israeli flag. Just about the time we left the dock and started out across the water, the wind got up. He took the American flag and hid and folded the Israeli flag. God said, we're supposed to help them. We're supposed to help take care of them. God sent me a blessing nobody else knew about. Brother John Ledge looked at me and he said, so what are you seeing? And I told him, I said, I see America taking care of Israel. Well, I believe God wants us to. God lives. He lives here. He lives there. We can see him wherever he is. Thank God he was victorious over the grave. He was not there. We went from there, went to a little place, a little street just outside the, the walls of Jerusalem. They have a huge tabernacle there now, and they call it the Tabernacle of Ananias. And if you'll find it, read it and find who it uh, really is, <laughs> that is the place that Christ was kept the night before he was crucified. We were down in the King's Valley. There's a set of rock steps. They're about so long and about so wide. It goes up the side of the mountain. It's Pretty, not really that steep, but they have the steps that they travel for hundreds of years. And the guide said we believe that those are the very steps that when Christ left the Garden of Gethsemane, walked up the hill and went for the, at the, the upper room for the Last Supper, he left the Last Supper and went back down into the valley to pray and then when they arrested him, they went to him in the Garden of Gethsemane to arrest him. He had to walk back up those steps, back to Ananias' house. He was kept in a dungeon overnight. And I, I didn't know a lot about the story and when I got there. And when they told us his Ananias' house, if you remember in your Bible, it said that when Peter denied him, he was in Ananias' house and Peter was on the porch. said the crop grew three times. We, the tour bus stopped in the street and let us out and we was going up on the porch of the tabernacle there's a rooster crow where he's at I don't know never never saw him never nothing but we heard a rooster crow first thought remembered Peter denied before that fellow crowed God just reminded us that things happen like he said it did God's doing things now God took care of the anointing of the body before the death. They couldn't go on Saturday. They went on Sunday morning, and hallelujah, the tomb was empty. He had got up and went home. He didn't need anointing then. 
He was sitting at the presence of the Lord then because he was going back. He came back. He met the disciples and told them to go down to Galilee. Now, folks, it takes a while to ride down to Galilee, let alone walk down to Galilee. They were right there because that's where Christ wanted to meet them again in the upper room. I'm glad God meets us wherever we're at. We can meet with him because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Thank God our Savior lives. Let us stand, boy. <laughs> if you don't know him today, I hope you'll come. Sis plays something on the piano. God's, he's real. His spirit's real. He works in our hearts and lives and Thank God he's not in the grave. <laughs> Hallelujah. He got up and went home. He's there, thank God, on the right hand of the Father, interceding for you and I. <laughs> and I believe as much as it, when he stood up for Stephen to welcome Stephen home, I believe he's welcome up, welcome his children home. He knows who we are. And if you don't know him, he wants to know you. He wants to be your personal Savior. If you ever need want to meet Christ, today would be a good day to do it. Play, if you will, Sid. You ever need want to come, you come. It doesn't matter who you are, where you're from. You have a need. Fellowship together. Boy, what a day. God's give us. Amen. Uh, come on, Mom, stand with me. Eddie, you'll send the comes down the other side. Enjoy Eddie's message this morning. You let him know.